Now, it is the fifth intercostal space. What percentage is intracellular fluid? It is basically 40% of the body mass. 60% of the body mass is water. Of this, one third is extracellular, two thirds is intracellular, is what you have to ultimately remember. Majority of the CO2, how is it transported? It is in the form of a bicarbonate ion. Majority is basically transported. Let us compare CO2 content and oxygen content in the blood. Basically, the total CO2 content is 50 milliliters per deciliter. Oxygen content is 20 milliliters per deciliter is what you have to ultimately remember. What is meant by resting membrane potential? It is the potassium's equilibrium potential, not sodium, which will decide the resting membrane potential. C fibers that transmit the pain, they are typically unmyelinated fibers, not the myelinated fibers. Type B fibers are autonomic preganglionic fibers. Type A gamma is the one which supplies the muscle spindles. So these are all the things which you should not basically forget. Endolymph and perilymph. You need to know the difference. Endolymph resembles intracellular fluid. What is the principal intracellular cation? Potassium. Then as uh, the perilymph is very similar to interstitial fluid is what you have to ultimately remember. When the lungs expand, they lead to a negative intra-alveolar pressure, subatmospheric intra-alveolar pressure is the one which is basically generated. Expiration is usually a passive process. Um, filtration fraction of the nephron is how much? What is meant by, is the internet speed okay? <clears throat> I mean, is the transmission smooth? Check it. Give a call to Tirupati. Find out is the broadcast speed is okay or not. Huh? Okay. 20% of our plasma which is flowing through the glomerulus, it becomes filtered in the proximal tubule. So GFR by renal plasma flow ratio is basically called the filtration fraction is what we need to fundamentally appreciate. Now coming to the nephron, what happens in loop of Henle? Typically loop of Henle is responsible for diluting the filtrate. It reabsorbs 25% of salt but only 15% of water. More salt, less water means more water inside the tubule. Hence, there is a diluting. It is a diluting segment is what you have to ultimately remember. Now, whenever there is a uh, uh, potassium leak out out of the cell, uh, I mean, what will lead to a reduction in the leaking out of the potassium out of the cell is the question. So basically, <clears throat> it is the membrane potential which is the determining factor. Concentration gradient of the potassium is a determining factor and the conductance of the membrane. There is a reason. If you hyperpolarize the membrane, it makes the inside of the cell become more negative than outside and it makes it more difficult for the potassium to leave the cell. So hyperpolarization diminishes the potassium leak out of the cell is what you have to ultimately remember. Now all these processes, phosphate movement into epithelial cells of the PCT proximal convoluted tubule, calcium movement into the sarcoplasmic reticulum, they are all active processes. 
but the glucose movement into the fat cells is by facilitated diffusion that's the reason it does not involve any atpase activity is what you have to ultimately remember if the extracellular potassium ion concentration is elevated what will happen to the conductance of potassium as we already discussed the leaking out of the potassium depends upon the concentration gradient any increase of the extracellular potassium makes the membrane potential become more positive and that will open up the potassium channels typically and uh, uh, the sodium potassium activity pump activity is typically reduced in hypokalemia not in hyperkalemia is what we need to remember what is dka uremia dka they are all the conditions of high anion gap metabolic acidosis a gulen mary patient is having a ventilatory failure when he is having ventilatory failure he goes into respiratory acidosis why if you are not ventilating your carbon dioxide is not leaving it is remaining in the body and that converts into carbonic acid that is broken down and h plus is released and that lead to acidosis hypercapnia due to ventilatory failure lead to excess carbonic acid production which lead to development of acidosis which is called respiratory acidosis any acidosis what is the effect of it on the respiratory center that lead to stimulation whether it is metabolic acidosis or respiratory acidosis it mainly will go and stimulate both the central and peripheral chemoreceptors is what need to be remembered if you give a diuretic therapy person loses the fluid intravascular volume decreases renal plasma flow decreases that stimulates renin angiotensin aldosterone which will lead to retention of sodium loss of h plus into urine which lead to metabolic alkalosis so diuretic therapy leading to hypovolemia leading to hyperaldosteronism leads to metabolic alkalosis is what you are going to ultimately remember now you have a hyperkalemic patient how do you want to bring down that potassium levels insulin and epinephrine yes yeah insulin insulin can be given along with glucose epinephrine also is known to bring down the potassium level by moving it into intracellular compartment from the extracellular environment hyponatremia typically occurs whenever there is excess adh production anti diuretic hormone what will it do doctor it will prevent diuresis retains water retained water will dilute the sodium concentration hence hyponatremia will occur typically sadh what happens hyponatremia now with regard to the fetus how will be 2 3 dpg binding of the hemoglobin it is less hence it will bind more to oxygen the fetal hemoglobin ventromedial nucleus makes us to eat food then even lateral nucleus also in the hypothalamus makes us to eat food paraventricular nucleus secretes oxytocin and arcuate nucleus will typically lead to gnrh production is what need to be understood when there is a metroregia we should rule out endometrial pathology hence we need to do fractional cure touch of the endometrium is considered to be essential it is the gold which is galactose one phosphate uridyl transferase which is the enzyme which is deficient in galactosemia in von gaiks typically there is a inefficient utilization of lactose for the glucose production glucose neogenesis get affected so we have glucose 6 phosphatase deficiency which is called von gaik what is pomp pomp is alpha 14 glucosidase cori is branching enzyme deficiency you have one dirty list of 
glycogenosis and respective enzymes which need to be fundamentally remembered. Since they will have lactic acidosis that can impair their exercise tolerance in the case of the von Geich's disease is what need to be understood. Now what is Hunter? Hunter is mucopolysaccharidosis with X-linked recessive inheritance with iduronate sulfidase deficiency is what need to be remembered. What happened in Hurler? Both the dermatone and hyperon sulfate they become accumulated and lost into the urine and it leads to hepatomegaly is uh, what I like to underscore. Why glycolysis does not occur in RBC? I mean only glycolysis occur in RBC because they cannot carry on citric acid cycle due to lack of mitochondria and glycolysis just occurs in cytosol it does not need mitochondria is what need to be remembered. Lashkinihan syndrome hypoxanthin guanine phosphoribosyl transferase HGPRT deficiency it is an X-linked recessive disorder even that also you know. Now among the purine nucleotides whose breakdown directly leads to the uric acid formation. See doctor is the internet speed on this is slow? Is it a local internet problem or a broadcast problem? <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> no problem outside. Sure. Broadcast is smooth. Huh? Okay. Now doctor, many times we discussed earlier, de novo synthesis salvage pathway for purine metabolism, I mean purine synthesis. What is meant by salvage pathway? Whenever DNA is broken down, the nucleotides which are released by the breakdown of the DNA will lead to formation of guanine adenine etc and uh, those things are being taken up and uh, used for the formation of purines is called salvage pathway whereas freshly you take the substrates and create the purines you call it as de novo pathway. We have a HGPRT hypoxanthine guanine phosphoribosyl transferase which is involved in the salvage pathway where it will convert guanine into guanosyl monophosphate, hypoxanthin into IMP etc etc. Any deficiency of this what will it lead to? This hypoxanthin guanine cannot enter into the purine production and typically what happens to them? They become metabolized and excess uric acid become produced. 